Mr. Cush here, Pope of S-156. Many of you probably know that I'm a theology teacher here, but you might be surprised to find out that I wasn't always the pious, upstanding man you see before you. In fact, in my early 20s, I was a convinced atheist. But through the gentle prompting of the Holy Spirit, God changed my heart regarding his existence and the truth of the Catholic faith. But my conversion wasn't simply an intuitive matter, but also an intellectual one, in which I shed many of the prejudices and misconceptions of my atheism. For instance, how many times have you heard it said that there's an irreconcilable conflict between science and religion? Poppycock! I used to believe this canard, but I could have been spared lots of confusion had I just read a book like this one. Modern Physics and Ancient Faith by Stephen Barr. Barr, a theoretical particle physicist at the Bartol Research Institute at the University of Delaware, and also a believing Catholic, looks at five developments in modern science, from the quantum revolution to Einsteinian rel relativity, and shows how, far from pointing us away from God, these discoveries point us directly to the God of classical theism. Or, if biology is more you speak, you can check out this book by the former director of the Human Genome Project, Francis Collins, called The Language of God, A Scientist Presents Evidence for Belief. Collins, a former atheist, sees no conflict between science and religion and especially between evolutionary biology and belief in God, describing DNA as God's instruction manual and evolution as God's elegant mechanism for creating humanity. Or, for the more philosophically inclined, you could read this book, David Bentley Hart's The Experience of God, Being Consciousness, Bliss. Hart brilliantly exposes the irrationality of atheism and shows how only the God of classical theism, the one absolute self-subsistent being of the world's great religious traditions, Eastern and Western, can explain our everyday experience as conscious, rational agents in a contingent world. This book is extremely difficult, but there simply is no more powerful defense of theism in English. All right, Mr. Cush, so I'm convinced that God exists, but why do you believe that God has revealed himself uniquely through Jesus Christ? Well, the Holy Spirit can lead us to this truth, but there's strong historical evidence to back it up. For instance, you could read this book, Jesus, the Evidence by Dr. Brant Petrie. As Dr. Petrie demonstrates in this remarkably accessible book, the historical evidence that Jesus existed, made divine claims for himself, and then rose from the dead is overwhelming. Or you could check out this book by Oxford Don and Chronicles of Narnia author C.S. Lewis, a classic work of Christian apologetics that demonstrates the imminent reasonableness of the Christian faith. Well, of all the Christian churches and denominations, why then did you become Catholic? Well, I didn't initially, but I came to believe that the Catholic Church is the church founded by Christ because of books like this one, Scott Hahn's Reasons to Believe, which shows how the Catholic Church is the fulfillment of the universal kingdom promised to David in the Old Testament. Or this one, The Spirit of Catholicism by renowned German theologian Karl Adam, which explains the biblical basis for the papacy, the communion of saints, and other uniquely Catholic teachings, and shows how the Catholic Church is the continuation of the incarnation of the Son of God, or, in other words, the mystical body of Christ. So, there you have it. Get on down here to the library and check out one of these books. Deus vult. God wills it.